Okay, we're getting ready to put the pistons back in. We have the mains done. And uh, I've got the liners in. We checked all our liner heights. Uh, the liner heights are good. But you'll notice the new liners that come in these uh, overhaul kits, they have a step in the top of the liner right here. And it's a very sharp step, okay? So there's really no way to set the piston down in here and get the ring small enough to go and pass this step. The rings would catch here, or if you have a you know ring compression tool, uh, they would go in and they would catch on this step. This ring here, uh, before you assemble the engine, is designed to go inside here. And you, you install these rings here uh, on each of the liners before you put the head down. Well, if you put this ring in, then there's no way to get the piston in because this ring is actually barely the diameter of the piston itself. So the piston rings and the oil ring and all the extra stuff that's on the outside of the piston, you know, that go on the outside of the piston, uh, won't fit through this thing and go past it into the liner. So there's no way to set the piston down once you install this into the liner. And without it, there's no way to set it down in there without catching this lip and causing some damage, possibly causing some damage. So they make a tool, Cummins has made a tool to overcome this problem. And this is what kind of what the tool looks like, but I don't have the part number for the tool. Uh, I had I ordered the tool. I ordered, I had I, I knew the part number at one point because I ordered the tool uh, from Cummins up here uh, down the road from me. They told me it would be uh, a month and a half before I could get the tool. They didn't seem to have it in stock, which is miraculous because you know how many in frames do they do in this area at the dealers and at you know the shops. I'm like, come on, I mean, give me the right tool. So they, they sold me all this stuff, but they wouldn't sell me the tool, you know. Or at least, you know, they gave me the impression that they can't get a hold of it. So I had a friend make this, and what he did was he took an old liner, uh, one of the old style liners. I mean, come over here and see one of my old liners. This is the old style liner. And uh, you can see, here's, here's the top of one of the old liners. And you can see that it's smooth all the way to the top, and it's round, uh, you got a smooth lip. It's easy to put the pistons in these because it's, it's got clearance for it. So what he did is he took an old liner and he, he, he took all the carbon and build up and ground it out and rounded it off really well, put it on a lathe and cut it off and then he instepped it, the liner itself, uh, from an old liner until it fit in, that, in, the new, uh, in these new liners. And now I can use the top of an old liner with this step cut in it from you know, my friend put, a, put it on his lathe and it'll slide right down in here and it'll fit right in that groove and fit perfectly and line up perfectly with the uh, the new liners. I'm not going to put it all the way in here. It's a little tight fit. Uh, but uh, it'll go in here and then now we can use our, our um, piston compre you know, ring compression tool to compress the rings on the piston and slide the piston right in. The only other alternative to this, if you don't have this tool and you end up with these liners, is to not install the liner, but to put the piston in the liner upside down from the bottom up, and then install piston, liner, and all as one assembly. But it is very difficult to do that. Uh, I know some older engines, like some of the old cats and stuff, used to do them like that. You t the old 14 liters and stuff, you, you install the piston. Like, and you have to do it as an assembly. I'm gonna tell you something. That is heavy. It's cumbersome. It's not something you want to do at all. It's very hard to do uh, and takes some skill, uh, more skill than I'm willing to put up with. So I had somebody make me a ring, and we're gonna use it to install these pistons. So I thought I would show that, and also show the fact that this ring goes on before you put the head on, after you've got your pistons in. So uh, let's go. Uh, let's go put some pistons together and start putting them in the in the holes. All right. This this ring here, uh, it goes in on top of the liners after you get the piston in, before you put the head on. This ring stays. It's it actually it's permanent. And this is a, a wiper ring for the very top edge of the piston. It's they call it an anti-carbon packing ring or an anti-packing ring or, you know, it's it's like a, a wiper. For the top very top edge of the piston and that's why it's barely bigger than the piston so uh, it helps keep carbon packing down in the new motors and that's why they made this or changed this design you don't want to install in the uh, retainer ring yeah this is a snap ring i always put it on one side 
I always put it on the side. It's got the air pointing forward. That way I know the snap ring's always the forward of the piston. So when we start setting up the piston and the rod, as we talked yesterday, uh, the tab side went to the driver's side, and then the number side that corresponded with the rod goes to the passenger side or exhaust side. And so if this is the engine, uh, this is the passenger side, so this will be the front of the rod. And I know from this rod, Brazil's on the front, so when we build up our pistons, I'll always lay Brazil down with my snap ring down, and then we'll assemble the piston like that, and it's a complete unit with, you know, everything's to the front down. And that keeps you from getting any confusion. So that's why I start off with the snap ring there. And then we'll get ready to put the wrist pin in. We can just slide it in. Got a lot of box of goodies here. We already clean. I just take brake cleaner. Support it to clean this hole out. Because um, that's what feeds the wrist pin and uh, just clean everything up good. I take the same thing we was using for our uh, mains yesterday and I put in this wrist pin there just kind of smear it around. That way I don't have any dry starts. Huh? Put a little bit on the wrist pin. It's a messy job that's for sure. Okay, so we got okay. three sets of rings. Three sets of rings. Excuse me. That's the white wire. I always found it to be easier to put this oil ring from the bottom because if you do it from the top, it gets. It always seems like it gets trapped up in the uh, ring glands up here. Um, so if you do it from the bottom side, it's the first groove you come to, and. Um, it has your opening there. On the opposite of the opening, always see that white? The white should always be at the opening. If you come directly behind it, you grab your fingers like that and see how that spreads apart? Uh -huh. And so that you just do it like that, that spreads the ring apart, and you slide it on. Um, See these rings here fit really, really loosely anyway. See how loose that is? Mm. I didn't catch the first part because I was talking to her. Okay. What I was telling him is um, I always put the rings on the piston without putting the rod on because I don't have to slide down. The oh, yeah. Them. Now these fit pretty loosely, but some engines like Detroit, they're really tight and you'll never get it on the top side. So I just have a habit. Of and this is your engine assembly lead? That's my engine assembly lead. And, um, so I always put the oil ring on first. That way we won't have to, because these are very, very delicate. They will break. Really? Yeah. They'll be real careful with them, huh? They'll be real careful. That's why I say if you put it in the vise sideways when you get ready to squeeze it versus like this, imagine trying to squeeze that ring. Yeah. See, it's floppy. Yeah. Well, if you put it sideways, it sits down in a groove. And that way, and then you, you can go, yeah. Cre squeeze it up a lot easier. Um, we will have to index these rings. Um, Correct, yeah. They have to be indexed. But, uh, We're just going to put it together and make it work. Gonna put it together and make it work. These rings I always have top on the top one. Really? They do? See, it says top. Okay. And it says one. In other words, that's the first joint. The second ring, that's your compression ring. The second ring always has a bevel. The bevel, even if it was never marked. Okay. The bevel always goes up. Okay. Uh, the bevel always goes up. And this one here says top two. Oh, okay, so that's the second so ring, and that's the, the top ring. of the second ring. A lot of times you don't get that lucky, but you see there's a thickness difference. Oh, okay. There's a thif thickness difference. And then the ring gland, the one only fit in the one hole. Oh, okay. So it'd be really hard to mix up, but you'd have to instill it to find out if it mixed it up. But uh, luckily, 
We buy genuine parts. Yeah, I only use genuine parts. Right? Everything's always marked. Right. But you get some aftermarket stuff, that, that's where they fail. They won't mark the stuff. And it won't be as good a quality. It won't be the quality. right thickness. Um, They'll shave a few, or it won't be the right material. Right. Like these are uh, composite pistons that are coated. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll get some non-composite pistons and you wonder what happens after 300,000 miles when they look like the craters of the moon. Uh, also, the aftermarket won't have the air up here, so now you got to determine uh, which groove is lower than the other. See how that's thicker than that? Yeah. That's always the exhaust side. That's the exhaust groove. Um, oh, I didn't know that. See, that's yeah. something I learned just now. Yeah. So these three are the same height, and that one's actually lower. Yeah, you can feel it. Yeah. I never paid attention to that. Wow. These three are the same height, these grooves, and then that one's significantly lower for the exhaust valves. So, and like I said, that's that's a good part about getting genuine Cummins. Right. They really do a good job of marking their stuff. So, uh, these rings here, uh, I've seen people try to take and do them. That's the way I was taught in the beginning, but I broke a couple that way. You broke a couple. Uh, but if you take these here, this is a ring squeezer. Really? Oh, uh, well, actually, expander. Ring expander. Uh, so you put it in here, and you just open it up. Just enough to get it on. Just enough to get it on. And you slide it down to the second groove. And voila. And I'll tell you something else it does, is if you try to put it on this way, you take a chance of scratching that piston. Oh, you scratch it, yeah, because right. you're scraping it. Yeah, and so then you, once you get it together, you got to And then the armor coating on it's right. not as good. Yeah, you're right. So. Wow, see all these things, you know, from somebody that's been doing it years, that's what they would know. So I just take it Me as a driver, I would I would have made sure I didn't scratch anything or anything, but I, I never thought of it that so way. so simple. Yeah. See, your rings are on, but see what I was telling you about how loose these rings are? Wow. They build them up really, really, but it gives it its flex, you know, in the cylinder wall. Right. Um, and you know, you was talking about... Um, with your your rings before and your old pistons yeah see how far they sit in how far they go in yeah how far they go in well over time when carbon packs in the cylinder packs in there it just comes out 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 now out, eventually the carbon pack and right the carbon in the oil and the soot in the oil on these new EGR engines getting under here eventually builds up and pushes the rings outwards right. and it scrapes harder and harder against the liner walls so this will give you and a that's comparison. what creates all the excess wear that i didn't see in my right. motor because i keep my oil really clean and you know we was talking about how to rotate and how easy it was how easy it was to rotate the right. engine yeah see and you're set about flush like this so so that's know. why my engine was so easy right. to rotate i thought it was slap worn out i mean it was i would go to somebody's truck and i would rotate their engine do an overhead set with them and I'll be like, man, this thing's really nice and hard to turn and stiff. Mine's like, whoa, whoa. I'm like, whoa. Yep, that's carbon packing on the rings. So that could be a very good indication. Perfect. I had a guy, uh, I don't know if you want to zoom out and have us talking. I had a guy not too long ago. I think he came in this shop here with you guys too. He said that somebody ran his overhead. And then shortly after, it was very shortly after, the, 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 you know, that little bar that's on the front of the air compressor with the square bit mm -hmm. for the socket to bar the engine, he says shortly after, that thing broke. It snapped off because one of the bolts in it broke. And it snapped off and it went through his front gear train and it destroyed the whole front of his engine. Remember that guy? Yeah. He that's said it was shortly after they ran overhead. I would think that if something like that failed, it would be because he's got severe packing and it took a lot right. of effort to just, because it's not hard to turn these engines normally. I, and I, I asked him twice, I said, how could that bolt possibly, how could that part possibly break? You know, just like that. I mean, I mean, it would take a lot of force of somebody yanking on it to break that. Right. But uh, now I understand why it could break, you know, if somebody's running their overhead or something and it's just really hard to turn because they got a lot of carbon packing. That's it. That's crazy. So that's supposed to be the purpose of the anti-polishing ring. Um, it's come down and wipe back. Because you see the lip on that ring. Uh, if you take that anti-polishing ring. Got it. Okay. Uh, we're talking about our rings. And this is that anti-polishing ring. That goes on the liner after you've installed everything. Right. Before you put the head on. Well, what it's going to do, you know, is tell you why we can't put the piston in through it. Right. Well, if you see, it actually sits on top of that ring. That's all the way in on that piston. 
Wow. See, it sits up on top of it. Yeah. So it's swapping any carbon that would get built up here back down. And then when yeah. the piston comes back down, then it just... Well, I was told that it, it. not only does it wipe the carbon, I was. this is what I was told it does. Uh, you know, don't take my word for it, though. I was told that every time the piston comes up and down fast, not only does it keep that from from building up on this edge, but every time it comes out of this ring, every time it, it mm -hmm. escapes the ring, it creates a little swirl right in through here to help keep the carbon packing out of the other rings. Right. That's what I was told. It also helps keep, it, it creates like this little swirl on the, around the edge. You know, and, when the and that's what I was told. And when we first thought about it, I'm thinking, carbon, man, that's... That's pretty thick. I mean, you so, think it would cause damage. Right, but, but that, if it's doing it every stroke and it's always swirling, right. it's just then sick. it's going to, like, you know, blowing it off with an air gun around the right. edge, you know, or something. Or, you know, that's my analogy of it. But, right. But, yeah. you know, at first you're thinking about it, you're like, man, I don't know, that's such a good idea. But you're right. It's a new piston, everything's new, and it's just going to keep it clean like that. Right. So, that's how that works. But that's why you can't put the piston in with the with, spring. Yeah. 